Folks, we need to talk about subwoofers. There is perhaps no other piece of AV gear that is as simultaneously mysterious, misunderstood, and magical as the subwoofer. I mean, in what world can something this tiny and something this massive both be called a subwoofer. And why do subwoofers have such a bad rep? What do they actually do and how do they do it? And why do I think you should absolutely have one in your life? Let's talk about that. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and as the wise poet, musician and activist Chuck D once said, bass, how low can you go? Death row, what a brother know. You know what, that track is 34 years old and it still slaps, but I bring it up not just because the first word is bass, but because it conjures up an era in which 808 bass was dominant in the hip hop and pop music scene. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with 808 bass, but the reason I bring it up here is because I believe that 808 bass, or the reproduction of it anyway, is ultimately responsible for the subwoofer's bad reputation. The thing is, I think if you understand what a subwoofer really does, how essential a subwoofer is for both movies and music listening, and what kind of subwoofers you can actually get today, you're gonna want one. So we're gonna go through all of that today. And if you like the way that sounds, then slap this video with a like and maybe subscribe for more because I'm looking forward to making many more videos just like this one, in addition to all the TV and other tech reviews we do here. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so a quick little history lesson. 808 bass refers to the big, booming bass beats and bass lines that were hugely prevalent in popular music in the 80s. They were produced by the Roland TR-808 drum machine. See, 808. Now, this drum machine was kind of panned for not at all sounding like real drums, but it became an underground hit. And the next thing you know, music was flooded with deep, resonant, booming bass. And if you grew up in the late 80s and early 90s like I did, then you already know that this sent folks down to car stereo stores in droves to get ridiculous bass boxes and amps added to their car stereos. In fact, I personally had many friends who had bass packages that were way more expensive than the cars in which they were installed. Like think Datsun B210 that was burning oil for breakfast, barely able to get down the road, but you could hear it coming half a mile away. And that's kind of the problem. Some folks became so obsessed with bass, so ridiculously deep and loud that it would actually shatter windows, that the concept of bass itself, and by extension of subwoofers, got a bad name. I mean, it's not as common now, but I think we've all been at a stoplight and had our fillings rattled loose by someone who is bumping a big system nearby. So take that annoyance that became associated with bass, add in the fact that home subwoofers were historically massive and ugly, and you can understand why some folks wanted nothing to do with them being in their home. I used to sell home audio gear, and I know from experience, and it's still a challenge to this day to help someone understand why they'd want a subwoofer. But things are very different today. There are a huge variety of subwoofers on the market, and folks are listening differently now. I mean, if you want a bumping system, you can have one, but in a world that seems to prefer music that is heard and not seen, the subwoofer has become even more essential. And if you really want a cinematic movie experience at home, again, a subwoofer is essential. Bass is what gives music and movies richness, depth, and presence. Done well, bass will move you, not necessarily the stuff hung on your walls, although you can certainly go there if you want to. So how do you get great bass in your home in a way that works with your style, space, and budget? That brings me to the subwoofers I have here. This is the SVS 3000 Micro, and it is a marvel of acoustic engineering. Now, if you're not familiar with SVS, they make some of the best subwoofers you can buy today. I still think the SVS SB16 Ultra is the best overall subwoofer on the market. But if you need powerful, deep, rich bass from a small package, the 3000 Micro here is my favorite option right now. For the price, it's basically peerless. It packs two opposing eight inch drivers paired with a sledge amplifier that provides 800 watts continuous power and peaks at right around 2,500 watts, which is just mind boggling. Now this subwoofer needs that kind of absurd sounding power because it is so compact and because it has a sealed enclosure, meaning there is no port 
for air to escape. So all the air it moves, and that's really all sound is, is moving air, must be moved by just one side of each eight inch driver. The cabinet is less than 12 inches cubed and it's only 22 pounds. So it can fit in all kinds of spaces and it isn't an eyesore. It comes in gloss white and gloss black. And I think it looks classy though you could easily hide it if you wanted to. It's also DSP or digital signal processing controlled and you can customize its output using SVS's app, which offers some customizable presets and parametric EQ control in addition to basic stuff like volume control. The bass it puts out is very tight and musical and agile. It's especially good for pairing to high-end speakers like SVS's own Prime Wireless or these Vivid Audio Kaya S12, which put out respectable bass on their own, but nothing like what a subwoofer is capable of. The sub picks up the lowest octaves that give weight to string bass and timpani in orchestras, as well as electric bass and kick drums in pop music. And it can deliver deep impact for movie action sequences, as well as movie music soundtracks. Paired with high-end speakers like the Kaya S12, the musical experience is superb and moving. So why then, if a subwoofer like the SVS Micro 3000 is so good and so affordable, would you ever need something like this monstrosity? This is the Monolith by Monoprice 16-inch THX certified ultra 2000 watt subwoofer. It is massive, measuring 28 by 22 by 26 inches and weighing a titanic 171 pounds. Yes, I moved this thing in here by myself. It's not just ported, it's got four ports, which you can tune by using these port plugs. It's a bit more manual than the DSP style adjustments you can make using the SVS app, right? And the amp, it produces 2000 watts RMS and can peak at over 3500 watts. So again, who in the world needs a subwoofer like this? Well, the fact of the matter is nobody needs a subwoofer like this. You can get very good performance out of subwoofers like this Klipsch 15 inch sub, which is still big, but much more manageable. But there is something to having a bigger subwoofer. You can only cheat the laws of physics to a certain point. So while a smaller potent sub like the SVS 3000 micro can get pretty deep and offer some rumble, there is nothing quite like the feeling you get from a big driver in a big box with a big amp that is designed to move massive amounts of air. But that doesn't mean that it's just a big ass box of boom that's gonna annoy everyone within a half mile radius. I mean, again, it can do that, but the idea here is to provide a certain visceral response, the kind you normally only get when you go to big concerts and movie theaters. This subwoofer is designed to move air like those big venue systems, but in your home, for when you wanna go big, when you go home. And obviously you're gonna need to have some room for it. But if you don't, like I said, there are big driver subs and boxes that aren't quite as large that can offer most of that experience and take up less space. The SB16 Ultra I mentioned from SVS is a great example, as is this Klipsch SPL15. Now, there's another approach to subwoofers I wanna talk about for a moment, and that's the notion of going with multiple subwoofers. Sometimes you'll hear about folks who went with two smaller subwoofers instead of one large one, or maybe two less expensive subwoofers instead of one expensive one. Let me just say at the outset that I'm a big fan of multiple subwoofers. I know it isn't always feasible, but if you can do it, I suggest you do. Now, to be clear, using multiple subwoofers isn't about getting more bass per se, or even louder bass. It's about getting better bass. But what does better bass mean? Well, for me, better bass means even, smooth, tight bass, no matter where you sit or stand in a room. See, bass is acoustically funny, or maybe tricky is a better word. When you think about it, your room is basically a box, right? It might be a big box or a small box. It might be a sealed box where you have four solid walls and can close the doors and be more or less sealed off. Or it could be a ported box where you maybe have a large opening to another part of the house. And just like the way a subwoofer's enclosure affects the way it sounds, so too does the room affect the way a subwoofer will sound. Sometimes you get dead spots where there doesn't seem to be much bass at all. And sometimes you get these really live spots where the bass is just overwhelming. 
And one of the ways you can deal with these kind of room specifics is with multiple subwoofers. With two sources of low bass frequencies, you can help even out the bass response in the room. And each subwoofer doesn't have to work as hard as it might if it were on the job solo. At any rate, if getting a subwoofer into a room is a hard sell to begin with, then getting two into the room may seem impossible. But when you have subwoofers as small as the SVS Micro here, then it might become a little more realistic. My broader point is you should have a subwoofer if you can. And there are so many great subwoofers out there now that there's something for just about everyone's needs. Figure out your budget and your space requirements and work from there. Just know that you can go with something as tiny as the SVS Micro 3000 or as massive as the Monolith 16 or even bigger if you want. And either way, get a great experience, not just hearing, but feeling music and movies at home. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What's the best subwoofer you've ever owned and why did you love it? Let us know down in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.